that occupies space and has mass. Okay, so that means again, matter is anything that occupies space, which means that it has volume, and uh, also it's got mass. Okay, now on the screen here, you have the three states of matter. You have your solid, your liquid, and your gas. Okay, there are several differences between solids, liquids, and gases. One difference is in their volume. Okay, now your solid is a type of or a state of matter that has a definite shape and definite volume. Your liquid, on the other hand, it has a definite volume, but it doesn't have a definite shape, which means that it can take the shape of its container. Now, in the case of your gas, it doesn't have any definite shape nor uh, definite volume. Okay, so no definite shape, no definite volume, that's your gas. Now, as you are trying to look at the differences in the way the particles are arranged, you can see that the particles in your solids are all tightly packed, okay? They are compact, they're all tightly packed. There's only very few air spaces between them if there's any, okay? Now, a long time ago, people believed that particles of a solid do not move. Now, according to your KMT, if you can remember, your kinetic molecular theory states that matter is made up of particles and that these particles are continuously moving. Now, we know that the particles in a solid they are not immobile. They're not. They're, they're, it's not really true that they're not moving. There is a movement with the particles of your solid, but their movement is very limited. Okay, and we use the term vibration for the movements of your solid particles. Okay, now um, as for your liquid, there's already some air spaces between your particles here, and we know that the particles of your liquid can slide past each other. Okay, the particles of a liquid can slide past each other. And so we say that liquids are fluid. Okay, they can easily flow. Now, as, as, as for your gas particles, you see that there's a lot of air spaces between them. Okay, there's a lot of air spaces between them. Now, as you can see here, we have red arrows in your pictures. You also have your blue arrows. We start with the red arrows first. A change from solid to liquid, this is, of course, known as melting. Again, solid to liquid is known as melting. From liquid to gas, you call this evaporation. Sometimes the term we use is uh, vaporization, sometimes also called boiling. Okay, so again, solid to liquid is melting, liquid to gas is evaporation or vaporization. There are also a few things that can go from solid into gas without going through the liquid state. Okay, so the process of changing a state of matter or matter from solid to gas without going through the liquid state, that would be called sublimation. All right, so this is called sublimation. You notice this, you may notice this in your mothballs, in your naphthalene balls, in your um, dry ice. Okay, so it can go from solid to gas without going through the liquid state. Now going to your blue arrows here, we see the opposite processes. The first one, gas to liquid, we call this condensation. Okay, gas to liquid is condensation. This is how rain is formed. Okay, rain, other types of precipitation. Now, liquid to solid, you'd call this freezing. Okay, liquid to solid is called freezing. And of course, you also have gas to, uh, gas to solid without going through the liquid state. The process of changing gas to solid without going through the liquid state, that would be called deposition. All right, so these are the different terms that are associated with the change in the state of matter or change in the phase of matter. Now, as you can see, you have your red arrows here. You also have your blue arrows, and we actually have terms associated with them, okay? For your red arrows, you use the term endothermic. Okay, endothermic. Now, endo, the prefix endo in science, this means going inside. Okay, and thermic, of course, this means thermos or heat. It can mean heat, it can mean temperature. Okay, so endothermic, this means matter takes in heat. Okay, now the opposite for your blue arrows, you use the term exothermic. Exo in science means going outside, and of course, thermic means heat or energy. Okay, so when you say exothermic reaction or exothermic process, that means it gives off heat. Okay, now if you will be asked, what is one entity or what is something that we need to change the state of matter? What will be your answer? It should be heat or energy, okay? Heat, energy, or temperature. So you take away the heat from your matter, it will change its phase or its state. You put in more heat, then it's going to change its state or its phase.